We found that babies born vaginally have different bacteria in their guts than babies born by cesarean section. And this may explain why cesarean section born babies have a higher risk of childhood asthma, eczema and other allergic conditions. I'm Peter Brocklehurst, I'm Professor of Women's Health and Director of the Birmingham Clinical Trials Unit here at the University of Birmingham. We've been interested in the microbiome, which is the collection of bacteria that live on and around our bodies, uh, in relation to how babies are born and whether they're exposed to antibiotics to look at the impact that may have on their later life. For example, we know that babies who are born by caesarean section are more likely to develop childhood asthma, eczema and other allergic conditions, perhaps uh, even uh, type 1 diabetes. But the mechanism by which the way a baby is born influences their later health outcomes is uncertain. One of the reasons may be that when babies are first born, they're exposed to bacteria which colonise their gut. There are at least as many bacteria in your gut as there are cells in your body. And those bacteria seem to be incredibly important in terms of setting the body's immune system when the baby is first exposed to bacteria. So we know from previous research that the bacteria in a baby's gut are different when they're born in different ways, but they've been from incredibly small studies, uh, often using uh, relatively um, earlier techniques for identifying those bacteria. We've done this in nearly 600 babies um, with about 175 mothers. And we've looked at the development of the microbiome, i.e. those bacteria that live in the gut, over the first few weeks of life, and then looked at that up to, up to age a year. We found quite big differences in the way bacteria are transmitted from the mother to the baby, perhaps not surprisingly. Babies born vaginally pick up organisms from their mother's gut during the birth process. What was rather more surprising is that babies who are born by caesarean section pick up organisms from the environment in which they're born in. So we found that babies born by caesarean section are much more likely to carry bacteria which are potentially harmful bacteria and which have resistance to antibiotics. We don't know the clinical importance of this yet, uh, but we do know that the bacteria that these babies initially uh, collect during their birth or shortly after can persist up to one year of age. And the pattern of these bacteria is very different in babies born by caesarean section than those born, born vaginally. So this is the first stage in trying to link that early exposure, particularly mode of birth, to, to later health outcomes. We've also found in those babies born vaginally who are exposed to antibiotics during labour that they also have a different pattern of bacteria in their gut than babies who are not exposed to antibiotics during the labour. And this in itself makes the microbiome, the pattern of bacteria, similar in babies exposed to antibiotics as those born by caesarean section. Uh, and that in itself is interesting and novel. We've not seen that before and the importance of that is still uncertain. So what does this mean for babies who are born by caesarean section? Well, we don't know. We don't know the importance of this. We are obviously interested and concerned that these babies appear to be carrying antimicrobial resistant organisms, which could, in other circumstances, cause disease. We don't believe at the moment they are causing disease in these babies. Uh, and certainly we've been delivering babies by caesarean section for many years. But what has changed in recent years is that when we do a caesarean section now, we give the mother antibiotics before the caesarean section, so the babies are also exposed to antibiotics and caesarean section at the same time. And that in itself may be more harmful in terms of um, the babies not getting the helpful bacteria which they need to from their mothers around the time of birth. So there's lots still to do. We want to explore the patterns of babies who are born vaginally and why some of their bacterial patterns are different depending on different factors such as antibiotic exposure, the type of feeding, so breastfeeding versus mixed feeding or, or exclusive bottle feeding. We're also very interested in looking at babies who are born at home and find out what their microbial patterns are like. Uh, they weren't included in the original study that we did, um, but it may well be that their pattern is very different where they will not be exposed to hospital um, organisms.
we also need to follow these children up in, in the much longer term and see whether these potentially pathogenic organisms that they carry in their guts persist well into childhood. And then ultimately, of course, we need to find out whether these are associated with things like asthma and eczema in later childhood, or whether the pathogenic organisms themselves may cause infections with those bacteria. That will need a substantially larger number of babies. The original study we did included three and a half thousand mothers and their babies. We're probably going to need closer to 40,000 mothers and their babies if we really want to look at the impact of these different bacterial patterns and show a relationship with asthma and eczema. So that's a substantially larger undertaking, but I think it's really important that we understand the mechanisms because there is the potential, and I say potential because we shouldn't leap into thinking about what we can do about it now, but there's a potential that we could actually use bacterial therapy for babies born by cesarean section to ensure that the pattern of bacteria they develop is more similar to those born vaginally, which may then then therefore decrease their risk of childhood asthma and eczema. Now to suggest we start introducing bacteria into babies now I think is premature. We have to first establish that this is the mechanism by which these babies develop later childhood illnesses and then think about the safety and what pattern of bacteria would actually give to these babies and how long for because it's quite clear that the first organisms that infect the gut or colonise the gut, probably more than infected. Those first organisms lead to other organisms being able to establish themselves, which then lead to further organisms being able to establish themselves. The whole dynamics are quite complex uh, and we want to do something which would mimic that. So we need to understand it a lot, clo a lot more uh, closely before we can think about introducing therapies, but the potential is there for developing therapies. So we do need to understand this in a lot more detail. I hope you found this interesting and informative. Um, there'll certainly be more coming out from the group as we do more analyses on the data that we've got. And hopefully we'll do a much larger study in the future which will help address some of these bigger questions.